Okay, so you've been seeing us do some sandblasting, and what we've been using is a Harbor Freight sandblaster, but Joe's made some strategic modifications to it to get it working quite a bit better. So Joe, you want to walk us through a couple of things you did? To... Sure, I got this cabinet of probably about five, six years ago, and um, when I first put it together and first started using it, um, it seemed to work pretty good. Uh, my old neighbor used uh, that I used to live next door to, uh, he had purchased one and uh, the first thing he told me to do is when you assemble it now, um, it comes in pieces. So like the cabinet is like pre-built but you got to put the funnel I guess you'd say on the bottom of it. He didn't go around and silicone the seals. So that was the first thing he told me to do otherwise they just leak all over the place and sand gets everywhere. Which it does anyway. Um, so I went around and seam sealed essentially all the welded panels that it, this came with, with silicone. Um, I guess from that point, I started using it and finding that the sand would basically fall to one side of the funnel, mostly towards the right, and it would pile up. And if you can get down in there, there's the dip tube down in the center there. That would kind of run dry down at the bottom of the sand. I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah. Well, sorry, we'll see it or not. You're probably not going to hear me either with it being there. Um, so what I found was I'd have to keep stopping the thing and and or use way too much sand. Um, I found with using a lot of sand to keep the thing full of sand for the dip tube was that like the weight of the sand would just kind of just plug itself up and render it sort of useless. So what I did was I use a little bit of sand and I went to Granger and bought what they call a vibrator motor. All it is is just an electric motor, 115 volts, and it has a counterweight in it so it just shakes when you turn it on. It came convenient with a switch right in line on the wire. Plug it in and I mounted it to the funnel so that it just kind of vibrates the funnel and keeps the sand moving down to the bottom. So that was kind of key on the first like modification I did to it to keep it at least functioning consistently. Now you still get debris in the pickup tube and you gotta kind of back blow the junk out of there but at least the sand was coming down into the dip tube efficiently and not plugging it up as much. Um, after that um, the next modification I did was the glass and we're actually going to change the screen in here because it's getting kind of wiped out. It does have a vacuum port to the side so I don't think that that's really necessary to go over that but just like hook up a vacuum to it. Pretty simple. Um, the, the glass top on this has a plastic retainer and originally um, I forget because it's been a while now the I do believe the plastic had the screws in from the bottom from the inside which is a total pain in the ass when you have to change out the glass or the film that was on here. Um, originally Harbor Freight had the glass here with sticky plastic and it had a tape line around it so you'd change that. It just it really sucked. So what I did was I basically drilled out the plastic um, frame if you would and let's just zip off these lug nuts or these wing nuts and uh, Show them what we got. Alright, so this plastic frame used to be screwed in from underneath. Now, what I did was, it's a little funky to get off, but it's well worth it. The bottom side here had, uh, like I said, the screw holes, and it would be screwed in from underneath. I just went through and just bored them straight out. Um, now, if I, I, it, this is like one of the first things I did. So maybe it did have screw holes through it, and it was a screw and a nut on the back side. I think that's what it was. Mm -hmm. the screw went through the sheet metal, and there was a nut on the back side, so it was a pain. So I just enlarged in the holes uh, to accommodate quarter twenty bolts, uh, long enough to go through the sheet metal and through the frame. And what I did was then got um, I don't know what you got to call it, speed nuts or, or flat flat speed nuts and got a quarter twenty, I think they're inch and a quarter long, drilled out the holes in the sheet metal and used these flat retainers. So they're flush mount to the top of the surface of the cabinet and then that allows you to get a stud. So if you go underneath there you'll see they're just a regular quarter twenty bolt head 
you screw them in from underneath with the clip and um, it just sticks up through so there's the bottom of the bolt going up uh, other than that I mean the foam gasket was here originally to seal the uh, frame if you would this one's getting a little bit worn out from all the sand so essentially you got a clear plastic film or it used to be clear um, I've sourced this from another place actually one of the local art supply places had thin plastic film and I forget the thickness on it but uh, I'd like to have these pre-cut so I need to find somebody that actually makes them pre-cut in a specific size that way I don't have to cut them anymore um, inside the cabinet I did put a old piece of radiator hose on the vacuum to kind of keep the vacuum from actually just pulling sand directly in so now it just kind of pulls the dust out instead of just raw sand so that was about it uh, so far uh, most recent update I did was the actual light because the light was kind of a pain in the ass too it was also screwed down with nuts and bolts through the top and it's very difficult to get in here to take that all apart if the light went dead or if the the film on the underside of the glass went went south which it usually does so I moved my switch over because my plugs on the other side so it really doesn't matter and I used velcro on the lamp itself folded cut and folded over the the one edge that used to look like this and we I work in an HVAC shop so it was easy for me to make a metal frame so I just cut uh, cut and bent in a break uh, just some sheet metal and uh, there's the piece of glass for the light which is basically a, a mirror image of this so I did the same thing I put studs in through the underside to retain the plate um, I couldn't use wing nuts so you know 7 16 uh, nuts had to hold down the, uh, the top so uh, filled it with foam just to keep tension on the glass with foam on the bottom side it also has a clear uh, plastic film underneath to protect the glass that's changeable this one's getting a little bit tired but um, it's still bright enough in there yeah it just has to let light through yeah so, so this was the most slickest thing I've done so far because this was definitely a pain in the rear I had my lamps were dead it was getting dark it's hard to see in there over time so this kind of now just fits over the studs in the back and then just sticks on them with the velcro so it works kind of nice it doesn't go anywhere and it's easy to change the bulbs so I guess we'll put the new film in. So we're going to pre-cut this one. This one's a little bit too big, but I think it'll squish down. Put the glass on it. And then the frame. Sometimes you got to wiggle the glass because it's really not centered in there. Perfect. And that's it. You just put on the wing nuts and now it's nice and clean and you can see through oh, it yeah. again. It's amazing the difference. Because you get to a point at some point you're just, <laughs> your nose is literally on the yeah. screen. Yeah, when I was using it, like, yeah, you definitely, like, you got to get so close. And then you get close and then your breath starts fogging up the right. glass. Yeah. So having, yeah, the clear plastic is all... X is basically like a tear off for like you know a, a racing helmet. Pretty I, much. When I was doing this cabinet, I had a really, I, I as a kid, I had a little like a, almost like a drawing station or whatever the hell you could call it. And the other thing too, growing up, we had overhead rejectors. Remember those? Mm -hmm. yeah. And they draw it right on them with the dry eraser or the permanent marker. And then some of them were pretty sweet. They had a roll of plastic film, and they would just they crank the wheel over, and then it uh, basically wipe it out. You know, before we had computers, kids. <laughs> um, yeah, the I, younger I, viewers are like, an overhead what? An overhead a, what? An touch overhead screen projector? what? No, yeah, this was pretty pretty high tech back in the day. But I thought about making some sort of roll like a scroll to scroll device so that I could literally just just wipe it clean yeah. you know but then trying to find plastic film on a roll like that and this width yeah. and it never really got anywhere plus then you have the issue of like getting the film between here yeah retaining the sand and it's just yeah because you have just... to have you'd have to have tension on it to, yep. to keep the sand from coming out but you'd have to at least loosen it to pull the roll through right this this really wasn't 
This I mean, isn't hard. Apart it just from makes taking it, the wing nuts on and off, it's, right. it's not that bad. Which beats the shit out of using a screwdriver and a wrench because they had, you know, of course they had lock uh, lock yeah. nuts on there with a the nylon. So, so I'm going to kind of put you on the spot, like, how how many hours do you think you could get out of a piece of film before it gets to the point where you're like, okay, I need a new one? Hours? I don't know. I This was clean before we started this project. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, so, we're talking like you know three, I mean? four hours? Constant use? Yeah, probably. Yeah. That's about all you're going to get. I mean, it's a sacrificial thing, so mm -hmm. it's either that or the glass goes to shit. Uh, well, yeah. You know, I mean, there's, it's a violent area inside there with sand. You know, I'm sure it's different with different materials because they do, you know, you can use walnut shells and all the, you know, different media right, in there. Right, depending on kind of how this aggressive is, your this is, is. This is a silica sand which is going to kill us, so, um, but it works good. <laughs> Alright, so that's... That's your Harbor Freight modifications that I've yeah. done so far. Other than that, uh, the gloves are original. They're getting a little tired. One's got a hole in it. And yeah, the old thumb yourself, hole. If you watch yourself, the old thumb hole, <laughs> shat with sand. You'll, you'll feel it, but it's... As long as you're not a big wuss, oh, you'll be able to talk. I guess going back on the film thickness, I did write the measurements down here, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Right there, 0 .005, 500 thousandths uh, inch film is what I have that I ordered. Um, came on a roll. And uh, just cut it to size. So there you go. Harbor Freight modded sandblaster. I will add, um, Harbor Freight has changed their their cabinet a little bit. A friend of mine purchased one maybe a year ago. Um, the light setup was a little bit different, or it didn't have a light like this on top at all. It had an interior light, more like a drop light assembly. So, um, like I said, this thing's probably... I think this thing is about six or seven years old. So, um, but the cabinet, I think, is still basically the same deal. The light thing is going to be, you know, whatever they have on it now. Yeah. Make whatever work.